Flagship smartphones in 2020 are a dime a dozen, but there's very few that set the bar a notch higher. This is one of those, the Oppo Find X2 Pro. It's got an exhaustive list of specifications and the performance to match, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why this is one of my most favorite smartphones of 2020. The first thing you'll notice about the Find X2 Pro is its gorgeous 6.7-inch display. Now, Quad HD resolutions and high refresh rates are the order of the day, but most flagships either have one or the other, and the ones that have both aren't able to gel them together. Here's looking at you, Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now, the Find X2 Pro makes no such compromises in that department. It's a 120Hz refresh rate, QHD Plus AMOLED screen with a 1440x3168 resolution and yes, you can have both those things running at the same time. The HDR10 Plus certified display also sports 10-bit color, that's 64 times more than what conventional 8-bit screens offer, so content on this display looks stunning. There's also the O1 UltraVision engine which offers video enhancements like being able to provide a wider color gamut to non-HDR content. It can also boost videos up to a smooth 60fps or even 120fps. Now let's move on to the camera of the Oppo Find X2 Pro. On this vertical slit on the back, you'll notice two lenses that are circular and one that's rectangular. This is the phone's ultra vision camera system that incorporates a 48 megapixel main camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 13 megapixel telephoto camera. These three put together offer a ton of versatility, and with the powerful hardware, Oppo has done away with the need of a dedicated macro sensor or a dedicated depth sensor. Just get really close to a subject and the camera app automatically engages an ultra macro mode. There's a dedicated night mode and portrait mode and Google Lens as well. The 13 megapixel periscope system offers up to 10x hybrid zoom and can go as high as 60x although pictures at that range aren't great. I found that pictures taken with both 5x and 10x zoom were very sharp with crisp details and could easily pass off as primary sensor images from a mid-range smartphone. The 48 megapixel main sensor produces natural colors without oversaturating the image, and there's great depth of field even without the portrait mode. However, if you'd like punchier colors, you can turn on the AI dazzle mode, which will essentially boost saturation. I quite like the idea of a 48 megapixel ultra wide sensor. It means you can get a unique perspective to all your pictures without losing a ton of detail. The ultra-wide images with the Find X2 Pro are proof of that, although there is a fair bit of distortion towards the corners of the frame. If you thought the lack of a dedicated macro sensor was going to be a problem here, well, you're wrong. The ultra macro mode captures great detail while preserving accurate colors. Along with this, there's an ultra night mode, and I'll be honest, there's a significant difference with pictures you take with the system and without it. What I mean is, if you're looking for a more dramatic image with pronounced shadows, you're better off keeping the night mode off. But if you want to light up everything in the frame, including the darker areas, then you can get the job done with the ultra night mode. In the performance department, the Find X2 Pro is an absolute beast of a machine. At the top of its spec sheet sits the latest and greatest Snapdragon 865 5G chipset, 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 512GB of UFS 3.0 storage. Gaming performance on this phone is as smooth as it gets with the highest frame rates possible thanks to that 120Hz refresh rate I spoke of before and the accompanying 240Hz touch sampling rate that makes for lightning fast touch response. I should point out however that not all games are going to be able to use that high refresh rate. If you're playing Call of Duty Mobile, you'll notice a very slight difference over a standard 60Hz screen, but if you're playing games like Injustice 2, the phone will make full use of all that 120Hz goodness. With its 4260mAh of cumulative battery split into two separate cells for faster concurrent SuperVOOC 2.0 charging, the Find X2 Pro goes from zero to full in under 40 minutes on an average, significantly faster than any competitor. Unfortunately, there's no wireless charging, which I think is a bit of a letdown considering the price and flagship status of the phone. 
Now, an important part of any smartphone is its operating system, and with ColorOS 7.1, Oppo has shown that they've really come a long way from previous generations. The interface has been cleaned up quite a lot, extra features have been significantly improved, and no longer does this look like an iOS clone. The phone runs Android 10, and while Oppo doesn't have a great track record when it comes to timely software updates for its mid-range phones, one can only hope they make an exception for their flagship device. Last but definitely not the least, let's talk about the Oppo Find X2 Pro's design. It's offered in two options, this ceramic black one and an orange vegan leather finish. While the orange model looks much flashier, I like the muted look the ceramic model sports. There are these slight ridges on the back that add a little bit of grip and create rather pretty patterns under the right lighting. If you're worried about dents and scratches, you can slap on the included transparent TPU case, or if you want something nicer, Oppo sells this carbon fiber case that goes well with the all black look. So to sum up, the Oppo Find X2 Pro is a genuine spec monster. Its list of hardware is enough to frighten any competition, and with software that finally backs up the performance, Oppo has shown real growth. At this price point, there's many contenders to choose from, including the likes of Samsung and OnePlus, but for me, the Oppo Find X2 Pro is still my favorite. Why? Well, simply put, because it does everything and then some. Lenovo has launched Flex 5G, a 2-in-1 convertible device which the company claims to be the world's first 5G laptop. The laptop was announced earlier this year at CES 2020 under the name Yoga 5G. It comes equipped with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 CX CPU as well as its X55 5G modem. Lenovo says the 8 CX allows for better battery life and claims up to 24 hours of use of a single charge. The Windows 10 powered device supports millimeter wave and sub 6 GHz 5G networks as well as LTE. It comes with a 14 inch FHD IPS display, 8 GB of RAM and up to 512 GB of storage. The Lenovo Flex 5G will go on sale in the US from June 18th exclusively via Verizon for $1400. The convertible laptop will be available in the UK, China and Switzerland later this year. Samsung has added a new smartphone to its budget A-series lineup, the Samsung Galaxy A21s. It features a 6.5-inch HD Plus Infinity O LCD display, runs Android 10 with One UI 2, and is powered by an octa-core Exynos 850 processor, paired with up to 6GB RAM and 64GB of onboard storage. In terms of optics, the smartphone has a 48-megapixel quad rear camera setup and a 13-megapixel selfie shooter in a punch hole cutout. The Galaxy A21s has a rear-mounted fingerprint reader and is powered by a 5000mAh battery with support for 15W fast charging. The Galaxy A21s has gone on sale via major online and offline stores in the country at a starting price of 16,499 rupees for the 4GB RAM, 64GB storage variant. Xiaomi's first Ultrabook laptop in India, the Mi Notebook 14, has gone on sale via Amazon and Xiaomi's online and offline stores at a starting price of 41,999 rupees for the 256 GB storage variant. The 512 GB storage model is priced at 44,999 rupees, while the 512 GB storage model with the Nvidia graphics card costs 47,999 rupees. Talking about specs, the laptop features a 14-inch anti-glare FHD IPS LCD display with support for a 60Hz refresh rate. It's powered by the 10th generation Intel Core i5 processor and comes paired with Intel's UHD 620 or Nvidia's GeForce MX250 GPU. It also packs 8GB of DDR4 RAM, up to 512GB of SATA SSD and 46Wh batteries rated at 10 hours of usage. <laughs> 